Bonjour guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the new FE exam 2020. The NCS is changing the FE exam after July 1st and I want to talk about those changes here. And don't forget to sign up for some free practice problems on my website. Now before we start, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you get notified each time I post new videos. Now let's get right to it. Oh yeah, everybody now. So if you guys visit the NCS website and you scroll all the way to the bottom, here you're going to see the specifications. So there are two types, one that is effective to June 30th, and that's for now. So if you're taking the FE exam before June 30th, that's the specification that you should be using. And if you exam it after July 1st, this is the specification that you should use, okay? Now in this video, I'm going to mostly use or talk about the changes on the FE Civil. Now you can use the same method that I'm about to use here for the other disciplines. But if you want me to make a video on the other disciplines as well, like FE Mechanical or FE Me Chemical, or FE Other Disciplines or any other disciplines here for the FE exam, just let me know in the comments below and I will make a video on those disciplines as well. Now to get the specifications, you can just click this here and that will take you to the specifications and you can just download it and just go over and have a copy of this. And if you're taking the exam after July 1st, then make sure that you use this one instead and then, you know, just go over it. Now, it's really important that you guys go over these specifications here. Make sure you pay attention to the numbers because this is important. This tells you how many questions you're going to get in each topic and you should study and know the ones that has higher questions because you are going to see a lot of those questions and that's going to increase your chances of passing your FE exam. So make sure that you guys go over the specifications and just have when you're planning your, your schedule for studying, make sure that this is open and it's next to you. And also when you're studying or sometimes a lot of the books, they don't really, uh, they're not very relevant sometimes and they have some equations or some topics that are not here. So whenever you're in doubt and you're not sure if that specific topic or question is going to be on your FE exam, always reference back to the specifications and the reference manual. That's how you know if that topic or that question is going to show up on your FE exam. Now let's talk about the main changes here, okay? So this year it's for July 2020 and this year it's effective up to June 2020. And so just to let you guys know, there are no major changes really. The only major change that I was able to notice here is that they removed completely computational tools. So if you are taking the exam after July 1st, 2020, you don't need to worry about computational tools. But what I also noticed is that they combined math and policy and statistics, which we're going to talk about in a little bit here. And then also like there were some topics in mechanics of materials that they removed, but just be careful. It doesn't mean that's not going to be covered in the exam. They were just moved. Like there was a column one, like the buckling column that was moved to structural analysis and structural design. Okay. And then there was also another one stress and strain, but you're going to see that in materials. So you just got to be careful. Some, you are going to see some topics or materials that was removed, but not completely from the exam. It was almost like you, you can say replaced or is put in under another topic. Okay. And another thing I noticed is that they combine some topics. Like before it used to be structural analysis, and structural design. Here they have it all under one topic or hydrology, hydraulics, and environmental. Now it's all under one material or one topic okay but let's dive in in depth here and then just go over one topic by one and just compare okay so the first thing here we have is math before it used to be math and poverty and statistics now we just have math and statistics combined together but you also notice here guys that the roots of equations is not covered here anymore under math all you gotta worry about is geometry analytic geometry this is about straight lines or like circles hyperbola ellipses and all that and then you have calculus so that would be integration partial derivatives uh you have also integrals area under the curves so that's what's under calculus then we have vector operations so this is cost product dot product the addition of two vectors so this is really important to know all these things so this was already on the fe exam right before then we have here, they added statistics. So statistics used to be by itself, but now it's added under math. But note guys here that everything that is here, it's actually here except for the expected value. Now the expected value though, 
it it's not again it's not removed you will see it but it's under engineering economics so which we're going to talk about in a little bit but note here in statistics you still have to know distributions you still have to know the mean the mode standard deviation confidence interval regression and curve fitting so again these here were already in the old exam right nothing changed they just combined it now with math okay and notice also guys that they increased the number here so it used to be 7 11 now it's 8 to 12 but that's because they combined it with 4 and 6 right so that's what that means now let's go to ethics so ethics it was interesting because they actually removed one or two topics from here from this list but other than that it's it's still the same but this sustainability and sustainable design it was added in engineering econ so here you guys are gonna see sustainability and renewable energy so but it's gonna be different topics right so under ethics you're gonna go over the ethics of sustainability and sustainable design but for engineering econ you're gonna more see like the uh, engineering economics behind you know these type of projects like sustainability and vulnerable energy so that's just something to keep in mind but now you are not going to be tested on this under ethics anymore and also the professional skills is not under ethics anymore either so you don't need to worry about this one and yeah so that's for ethics and notes guys here we have no computational tools okay so if your exam it's after july 2020 don't need to worry about computational tools. Now, let's go over engineering economics. So, engineering economics, they just changed a uh, little bit the words. So, discounted cash flow does the same thing as time value of money that just includes the present word, the future word, the annual word, equivalence. Equivalence, it just means like if I give you some, like I ask you today, you have $1,000, what is the equivalence of that in the future? right so that's what equivalence is and then you have the rate of return that's for investment so when you invest in an in a project or a company what is your rate of return okay then we have b so b is the cost again we already had these before but now they added more they added the fixed cost variable direct and indirect labor so you gotta know those and then for analysis it's still the same overall they did add sustainability and renewable energy, just like we talked about earlier. And then lastly, we have uncertainty, which is expected value and risk. Okay, so this here, you could you used to see it either in poverty and statistics or engineering econ. Now they just moved it under engineering econ. But let's also here go over the number of questions. So for engineering econ, it used to be only four to six, but now it's between five and eight. So they increased that number. So you might, you're going to be, seeing more questions on engineering econ than before okay now let's go over statics so for statics actually nothing's changed you're still gonna see the resultant force system equivalent force system equilibrium of rigid bodies frame and trusses the zero force members center of area moment of inertia and static friction but the only thing that changed here for statics is the number so you used to get between 7 and 11 now you might be able to see between 8 to 12 questions so that's just something to keep in mind this just means that you have to make sure that you know statics really well because you are going to get a lot more questions than before okay and also in case you guys didn't know i do have a statics course that really covers everything that you need to know for the fe exam i go by every single topic we do a lot of examples quizzes and at the end of the course there's also a practice exam so if you're not so well in statics or you just need to review and refresh statics make sure you guys check it out okay so for dynamics the number of questions are still the same you're still gonna see between four to six questions but now there's actually less topic which is impulse momentum they removed it so you're not gonna see impulse momentum anymore under dynamics it's just kinematics which is you know like when you have kinematics it covers like if you have a particle and it's you have to find the distance it's moving it has acceleration it has a velocity you have to find distance or time or there's the projectile motion so that's something that you should know for dynamics you also have mass moment of inertia this is really easy you already have a table under dynamics and you just kind of get the equation from there force acceleration and you have work energy and power okay so that in includes like kinetic energy potential energy gravitational spring energy and all that okay now let's go to mechanics of materials so mechanics of materials the number of questions stayed the same it's interesting guys if you notice here 
there's actually more questions under statics now than there is under mechanics of material. So that's just something to keep in mind. So make sure you guys know statics really well because it seems like they're going to give a lot more questions now after July 1st on statics. And it can be tricky, statics, because a lot of like the centroid questions and moment of inertia, it can take a long time to solve and even trust it sometimes, right? If you get a tricky trust. So make sure you guys know those basics really well. Now, going back to mechanics of materials, what they did here is that they combined some of the topics. So like here, combined stresses, principal stresses, and more circle, that's all under D. And then you have deformation, which is still the same, stresses and strains, and then you have shear and moment diagram, right? And then what they did is that, as we mentioned earlier, the column analysis, this was moved in structural analysis, which we're going to see in a little bit. You don't need to worry about composite sections. This is this one is a little bit tricky, and it is actually now they do ask composite sections questions on the FE exam. So if you're taking the exam after July 1st, you don't need to worry about that one. And then you have the elastic plastic and stress and strain diagram. So this year, you can't ignore these two because you will actually see these under materials, okay? Now, here in materials, nothing actually changed. The only thing is that the number of questions you used to get four between four and six. Now it's between five and eight. But as I said, make sure that you guys know the stress and the strain diagram here. And then you also have the plastic and elastic deformation. So these are really important when it comes to like physical and mechanical properties of steel, which is a metal, right? Now let's jump into fluid mechanics. So fluid mechanics, it's interesting because a lot of my students and when I took the FE exam myself, I saw a lot more than four questions on the exam. I saw probably like I had like eight fluid mechanics questions. And now finally, they actually put the actual number. This is how, how much they actually ask. And a lot of my students would actually agree with this. They, they've seen a lot of questions under fluid mechanics. But note guys here that the topics are still the same. So you still need to know flow measurements, fluid properties, fluid statics, energy, impulse, and moment, momentum of fluids, okay? So this is important to know. Now, let's go to surveying. So first of all, surveying changed. It used to be all the way at the end. So that was the last thing you would see when you take the FE civil. But now they changed it. So that's the first thing you see after the morning session. And you get a questions between six and nine. Now, let me go here all the way down just so we can compare the topics. So you still going to be tested on angles, distances, and trigonometry, area computations, earthwork and volume computations, coordinate system and leveling. The only thing that they removed is closure, which is good because closure problems, they take forever and they are really long. And I've actually had students who've had closure before, which was a surprise to me because they do take a long time to solve. So error of closure, or if you're trying to find the closure distance of traverse, you don't need to worry about that anymore, okay? Now, the only thing about surveying is that the number of questions did increase. It used to be only four to six. Now you get about six to nine questions. Now let's jump into water resources and environmental engineering. So water resources covers hydrology and hydraulics. So if you guys take a look at hydrology and hydraulics here, they took this here and then they just added the environmental engineering stuff. So basic hydrology, you know, infiltration, rain, rainfall, runoff, watersheds, that was there already. You have basic hydraulics, Manning, Bernoulli, open channel, pipe flow. You have pumps, water distribution system. You're still going to have that. Uh, flood control, dams, uh, routing, and spillways, that was here, which is under reservoirs. They just changed the name to flood control. Stormwater, you have detention, routing, quality. So you did have detention already before. Then we have collection systems. So this is kind of under environmental engineering. So here you have wastewater collection and treatment. So you got to make sure that you guys know that. Groundwater, flow, wells, uh, drawdown. So this is more under hydrology and hydraulics so you kind of had to know that already before as well so that would go under groundwater right and then we have here water quality this is environmental testing and standards that is environmental water and wastewater treatment is also under environmental engineering so like i said they did take hydrology hydraulics and they combined it with environmental engineering and now you're gonna get about 10 to 15 questions under water resources and environmental engineering versus you used to get 8 to 12 for hydraulics and then 6 to 9 for environmental, okay? Now let's go to the next one. Then we have structural engineering. So 
structural engineering, they actually combined structural analysis here and structural design. They didn't change anything. They actually kept the same exact terms here, deflection, analysis of forces in statistically determinate beam stresses and frames, structural determinacy and stability, and then you also have load paths, and then you have element elementary statistically indeterminate structures. The one thing they actually added here is the column analysis. And again, as I mentioned earlier, this here, it was under mechanics of materials, right? So like I said, they didn't really remove it. They just moved it to another topic, okay? So make sure you guys still know this if your exam if, is after July 1st, okay? And then here, after that, here you have design of steel components and design of reinforced concrete components, and that's under structural design. So they combine the two, and then also here now you get about 10 to 15. So all these questions, guys, between anything between 10 and 15, they're very, very important because you're going to get a lot of those questions. So make sure that you guys know them very well. And then we have geotechnical engineering. Nothing really changed here except that they removed drainage systems and erosion control. And they might have removed something else from here. But other than that, it's still all the same. And then we have transportation engineering. Also didn't change except they removed something from here i believe it was uh traffic so they combined traffic capacity with traffic flow theory they kept traffic control devices and then i believe traffic safety is no longer in the exam so you don't really need to worry about traffic safety but yeah but everything else kind of stayed the same they also increased the number of questions for transportation now you get between 9 and 14 versus 8 to 12. The next thing we have, and I think is the last thing, is construction. So this one is interesting because it, you used to only get between four to six questions, but now you get about eight to 12 questions. And it involves project administration. So this year, project administration, they just combined all these three construction documents, B and C. So all these three here are combined and, and the one for A, right? And then you have construction operations and methods. That's also something that you had to know before. And then we have project controls, construction estimating and interpretation of engineering drawings. So this year, the estimation of engineering drawings is new. So I'm assuming that they're gonna give you guys a plan and you have to read it or you have to say like how many footings you have or how much rebar, but I'm not sure. But I think that's what it's going to be right you just being able to read the engineering plans but once i know more about this i will let you guys know like what you need to know so those are the changes now is it going to be more difficult or easier well it's just really hard to say it just depends if you guys notice here there were no addition of new topics right if anything they did remove a couple topics and they did add like one or two topics maybe three but that's about it so the information that you need to learn is still the same it's just a matter of like now you're gonna might get more questions under hydrology hydraulics and environmental or more questions under transportation right or even statics as you guys saw so so it just depends it's really hard to say at this point if it's going to be harder or easier but as most of you know the fe exam is changing even now it keeps changing and it keeps getting a little bit more difficult and so, yeah, so that's just something to keep in mind. Make sure that you guys go over all the topics. Try not to skip anything so that way you build your confidence and you are ready for your exam. Now, if you guys want to see a video on the FE reference handbook, just comparing the two because they did actually change the FE reference handbook as well. So if you guys want to see a video on that and just comparing the equations and seeing what other equations they added, what equation they removed, just let me know in the comments below and I will make a video on it sometime soon. Now, if you guys need help with the morning sessions like math, policy and statistics, computational tools, ethics, engineering, econ, statics, dynamics, mechanics of materials, materials and fluid mechanics, make sure that you guys check out the FE Bytes course. I really go over all these topics and it really prepares you for what to expect on the FE exam. So as you guys noticed, the FE exam didn't really change much. There are some small changes here and there, but the topics and the material is still going to be the same. So if you can't find a date before July 1st, just take it after July 1st, because again, you are studying that material already and you're just going to be tested on the same exact material as if you took it 
before July 1st. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is now, if you take it after July 1st, you might get more questions on fluid mechanics, hydrology, hydraulics, or mechanics of materials and stuff like that. So that's just something that you got to keep in mind. So you might want to study more of those materials that has higher questions. But other than that, the topic and the material is still the same, right? If you guys have any questions about the course, you can leave them in the comments below or you can also email me. If you guys like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every Tuesday. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck with your studying and I will see you soon. À la prochaine. Oh yeah, everybody now.